The purpose of orientation, as we always do at the beginning of the year, make our PCSST family to be aware of our policies. In this case, we would like you to be aware of our virtual policies and procedures that we put in place. And also, all of my admin team have related slides for their area of responsibility. So they will be sharing related information with you. So just for the protocols of the meeting, we will keep everybody muted entire time. If you have any questions to presenter, please write down on the please write down on the chat box and related administrator will address that. If you are unable to uh, write on the chat box, you need to wait till the end of the meeting that we will be able to address all questions. So I would like to start with introducing my team. So as most of you know, my name is Raiza Gurkhanli and I, I am the lead person of all campuses. I have my district director of STEM instruction, Mr. Kaskin. I have my director of humanities instruction and curriculum, and also dean of student, Ms. Carter. Those who know Ms. Carter in the past years, she was our dean of student. Now we have a new role for her as the director of humanities for curriculum and instruction. She will still be in the dean of student position, but this year, Mr. Leitner will take over the responsibilities, the responsibilities of that position, most of them uh, as the assistant dean of student. Mr. Leitner, manager of school operations, Mr. Sebasi, and he is also our district security and testing data manager. Our district director of spatial programs, Mrs. Guvergin, director of student personal services, guidance department, Ms. Stevenson. Also, we have our attendance activities coordinator and our registrar, Mrs. Rivera. I also have our director of information and technology, Mr. Yaldere, and we also have our athletic director, Ms. Wintalov. We all welcome you to our virtual orientation. And also, the people that you need to know are the people we have in the front office who picks the phones and welcomes all the visitors in the building, Ms. Martin and Ms. Vilanua Arayo. And also Ms. Rivera is our reg registrar. So I would like to remind our mission that Patterson Charter School for Science and Technology is to provide responsive educational model that will empower all students through a standards-based, acute-based academic program founded on expectations of high achievement that will graduate literate, responsible, self-directed persons who have the core knowledge and skills needed to be successfully contributing members of the society. And we do run our morning assemblies every morning in this building when we have normal times, not the, during the COVID. And this is our slide that we share with our students every single morning to remind our students that we want them to graduate from our school as literate, responsible, self-directed citizens. So this slide will still be shared by teachers while they are doing their roll call in the morning during their homeroom time. 
Now I would like to pass it to my academic administrators. They will continue the rest of the slides. I will be in the meeting at the end of the meeting for your questions. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. So supplies needed for this school year. Every student um, received a PCSST issue technology and charger. So your child either has an iPad or a Chromebook with a charger. Um, PCSST uniform, of course, when we return, if we ever go to hybrid, there's uniform um, that is required. I will also go over expectations for dress code virtually. We will also need writing utensils, pens, pencils, notebooks, and class specific supplies. So when your students, when your children meet your teachers and they have classes with them virtually, they will also provide them a list of things that's needed for class. Next slide. So attire for at home learning. So during life instruction, during virtual instruction, students are expected to be dressed in accordance to the PCSST tag day guidelines. So we would like students to look um, presentable, even though they are virtual. So this includes no pajamas, no low cut tops or bottoms. Um, we know now virtually we can see from the waist up, but if there's a small break and we actually you know for a five second stand up or do something, you know, make sure that the attire for the bottom half of the body is appropriate. Um, no bandanas, no inappropriate images, graphics or wording, you know, that may be offensive to others. So please be mindful that <laughs> When you are online and your cameras are on, there is an expectation for how you should look. If you need to come to the school building, um, for any reason, please follow these necessary protocols. We call or we email the appropriate, appropriate staff member to make an appointment. If you come in without an appointment, you will be turned back. So please, you'll be turned away. So please make sure that you contact the appropriate staff member, you call or you email, the phone number is listed for you and you make an appointment to come in. If you, come to, if you need to come to the building, um, you must arrive in PPE, which is your face mask. They are required and we have our um, information listed there, the images you can see. They're in the school. So when you come to the school, you have to have them on the mask. Your temperature will be taken upon arrival. If it is over 100.4, you will be sent home. And if you have any signs of COVID, please, please cancel your appointment. Stay home. Reschedule your appointment, please. Attendance and grading policies. Attendance will be taken each class period. After 15 minutes of start time, your child will be marked tardy. Keep in mind that you are in school. It's essential that you arrive to class on time. It's essential that you sign in, you log in on time. You are to follow your daily schedule. You are expected to arrive on time and be in class for the entire period. If there's a reason that you have to be excused for a few seconds, we can understand that. The teacher will understand that. However, it is expected that you remain online the entire time that class is in session. It's also important that you are on time because TART, if you are late, it will impact your academic success grade, which we'll get into a little bit later. No late formative work will be accepted unless you have a valid excuse and summative work will not be accepted one week after the due date. So we do hold you to high expectations here and we understand that you know, there may be some issues that we have to work through. However, our expectations will remain high. Academic success, 
Um, active participation is required during virtual sessions. It will be a part of your grade. When you get to, when you actually meet your teachers, um, they will go into the specifics of how much it is weighed um, according to the subject. But TARDIS is also a part of this grade. So participating, being in class on time, staying the entire time, doing following the rules, that will all be a part of your academic success grade. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Koskin, Director of Instruction <clears throat> for Science and Math. I hope everybody is doing well. We're staying healthy. So I am going to discuss some slides with you. The first one, Ms. Uh, Carter just discussed. I want to go over some <clears throat> items. We had our meetings with our teachers as well. To make the virtual instruction effective, it has to be actually uh, there should be interaction between you and your teachers. That's why this slide we have on called academic success grade uh, is the new policy we're bringing. We used to have it here, now we're bringing it back. So what that means is you are not just joining the Zoom and playing on your phone. Uh, you are in the Zoom like you're in the classroom. You are actually interacting with your teachers and with your classmates. What that means is uh, when your teachers call on you, you got to respond. When he puts you into groups, there will be new features. We're going to use Zoom, and you're going to be in uh, small groups actually working with your classmates. So we wanted to mimic actual classroom as much as possible. So uh, once again, I just want to say everything you need to do in the class, uh, you should actively participate, do it, and that's part of your break. Can go to the next slide. So I want you to pay close attention to this slide because this is uh, totally new. Uh, and you know, every year when you came to school, the first day we would distribute your uh, schedules in the morning and you would take it, go to class. <clears throat> also, you would see on your SIS the schedule and the room and the teacher. So this year there is no room, you walk in, so you gotta pay attention to instructions so you don't get lost so you can start the year right away. Uh, let's pay attention to the schedule. I'm gonna try to break it down. You, It might be hard to see everything at once. First thing I want you to pay attention is the start and end of the day. Uh, remember our regular school day is 7.40 to 3.40. So we want you to get into school day mode. So you go to bed on time, you wake up on time. So 7.40 should be your start of the day. So you start with your, your day with a study hall time. We want you, we strongly recommend during this time you do your work to be prepared for your classes. But your after study hall, that's 50 minutes every morning between 7.40 and 8.30. This is also the time you have your breakfast. We want you to make sure you eat something, uh, you have energy, you have brain power to start the day. Uh, at 8.30, uh, you start your first live session. So every day you are gonna be having four live sessions on the Zoom with your teachers. This is the time I just talked about. You have to be actively interacting with everybody in the classroom. <clears throat> So your teacher is going to send you, your teachers will send you Google Classroom links. And when you join the link, you're going to be on Google Classroom. And on that Google Classroom, you are going to have your virtual live session uh, links. Once again, the step one, you got to see in your email eight different invitations because you have eight periods. For each period, you're gonna get a Google Classroom invitation. Your teachers will invite you in the Google Classroom, and that's the place you see your uh, Zoom link for every class every day. So let's continue with our schedule. Uh, you have your four live sessions every day, we said. 
The first one is between 8.30 and 9.20. You see every, each one of them is 50 minutes. And in between the two, there is a 10 minute break. We, if you remember, we had three minutes transition time in the building now because you were able to move in the classroom. Here, because you're gonna be sitting in front of the computer on the screen, we want you to get up, stretch, maybe drink water, do something if you need to use bathroom. So those 10 minutes breaks, we actually want you to be away from the screen and give your eyes a break besides your brain. So then we do our period one, I'm on Monday, period three, period five, the same way, 50 minutes each. We have the breaks in between, now comes our lunch time, which is 45 minutes. Uh, it's between, it's actually 50 minutes for you guys, 12, 15, 12, 11, 20, 12, 10. So after lunch, the day is not over. We come back for one more live session. That's another 50 minute uh, live instruction. For some of you, um, the day is gonna be over for live sessions at that time. For some of you who need extra help, you will have one more live session in the afternoon, three <coughs> days a week. If you pay attention to Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, you see after after period, last period, we have a 10 minute break and then we have uh, intervention. This is the time, dear parents and students, this is the time we get extra help. This is office hours of our teachers. They uh, fool you for extra help if they see you are behind or you miss something this is, there should be two ways. You can also ask your teachers to pull you for intervention if you think you need extra help. This is not just for students who, who are behind or who missed that class. It's also for you guys who, who wants challenge. Say you are an AP student, you actually wanna do more practice with your teachers. You can request that meeting uh, at that extra, extra help time. So I went over the blocks four blocks a day, live sessions, and then there is one hour in the afternoon for extra help that's also available to you. Uh, this is the <coughs> schedule for, yeah, after we finish our live sessions, we want you to be the responsible students we saw in the first slide to actually, before we, go out, play, uh, take care of your homework. That's why we put a study hall at the end of the day. This is your, this is for also self-directed independent students. You are on your own. In the morning during study hall and, and at the end of the day during study hall, the teachers are not supervising you. It's your own study time. We want you to sit at your desk and get your work done. If you do, do this daily, you will be on top of your work, otherwise, you don't do work in a couple of days, then it's gonna accumulate, it's gonna make your job harder. So please take advantage of that. So we shorten the school day, the live session day for you, because we know it's not easy to sit in front of the computer and watch or listen the entire day. But we also, at the same time, we want you to be using your day for learning. That's why we put the study hall once again. That's the time you should be uh, responsible for your own learning. Um, now, I, I want to talk about Wednesday for a minute before we move forward. So Wednesday's schedule is different. You see, Wednesday is the day when we see all of our classes. And the classes are shorter. That's why we didn't put live session. There, will be, there won't be any uh, required live session. If you and your teachers uh, agree on having a live session, that's okay, but that's not a requirement, it's not mandatory. All you need to do, you go in your classroom, take, for, for your attendance to be present for that day, you have to go on your classroom, see what your teachers put and complete that assignment quickly and you're done. So that's for every period. Uh, at the end of Wednesday, there is this special hour we call advisory, this is the only live session for Wednesday. 
this is the time every student meet with their advisor. Uh, we're actually proud of this advisory program in the school. You always have a go-to person for any for anything you want to discuss, for your academics, for your anything about your well-being. There is an adult in charge of you who will be uh, checking in with you every week, see, making sure you are doing well academically and in every way. So advisory, once again, is on Wednesday. That's a 24-minute live session. That's just to check in with your advisor, have a conversation <coughs> on how things are going. Uh, that's all about schedule, but once again, this, this is the slide you need to print out and put on your wall because this is your agenda, your calendar, that's, that's your daily program every day from Monday to Friday. Ms. Carter, you can go ahead. Next slide. We're back. Academic expectations during virtual learning. So you are to follow your daily schedule and arrive on time to all classes. You lose credit for a full year course after 18 unexcused absences. And we'll talk more about attendance later on in this presentation. Participate in your virtual classes as you would in the classroom. So if you were in the classroom, your teachers would expect you to answer questions, to be um, awake, to be aware, to be alert. So we're expecting that also virtually. You're expected to complete all assignments and turn them in on time. We have study hall, as you saw in the morning before class starts and at the end of the day. So there's ample time for us to review work. So please hand in all your work on time, attend all scheduled interventions and advisories and please reach out to your teachers and counselors if you need extra help or assistance in anything. We have a great team. Our teachers and counselors are definitely there to assist you. And please conduct yourself like a literate, responsible, and self-directed student. Again, we are not there sitting with you. So we are basically allowing you to show how responsible you can be and to get all your um, assignments done and to meet our expectations. So what we recommend for a positive virtual learning environment, find a quiet place to work. Do not attend class from your bed. So we are expecting you to be out of bed, not in pajamas, but to be awake um, and in a quiet area so that you can get your work completed so that you can focus. Use a workspace that is big enough for all of your school supplies. So before school begins, we can, you know, you should probably figure out where you would need to be in your home so that these recommendations, you can actually apply these recommendations. Try to avoid distractions, put your phones away. Distractions can be, you know, siblings, you know, want to play games with you, your TV, your telephones. Please try to avoid all distractions. Mute yourself until you are told to unmute and use the breaks that we put in the schedule to stretch, you know, get snacks and use the restroom. High expectations. PCSST teachers believe that all students can achieve academic excellence. Every student will be held to high expectations in engaging classrooms where students' skills-based instructions take place. We offer a variety of courses in order to help better prepare all students for college and career. Honored advanced placement and dual enrollment courses. So we are ensuring that we're trying to help you be college and career ready so that's our expectation for you. So if you follow all the recommendations, then we believe that you know you will do your best and you will succeed.
Hello, everyone. Um, as you know, we have standard space grading in the in PCSST. Uh, what this means for you is that your teachers will actually tell you what is expected of you for every lesson, and that's to help you um, keep track of your learning. So, in every lesson when they start, they will clearly share with you what it is like to be uh, at the expectation, meeting expectation, going above and beyond, and what is not enough. So, like we said, you should be responsible for your learning. So make sure you pay attention uh, to what is expected of you. So the grades are meaningful for you. So as you see, if the three is the when you meet and four is almost one grade level above you. So please make sure you pay the pay attention to the expectations they when they discuss learning objectives in the classroom every day. You can go. So on the system, as you know, by this time everybody should be familiar. We don't use like the hundred scale. It is A B C D zero to four. So uh, we want definitely everybody to be A A plus. So just like I said, you should uh, make sure that you understand what is expected of you. And whenever you are not at that level, we have uh, the structure in place to provide you extra help as much as you need. Uh, this is the logic behind intervention, extra help, standards-based grading. So if you see on the left, giving everybody the same support is not fair. Fair doesn't mean equal. Fair means give everybody what they need. So that's what we're trying to do for equity. We want to make sure we support everybody to help them get to the level they need to be. So you want on the right, everybody can watch the game because everybody got what they need. So for us, making sure you watch the game is making sure you're at the academic level that you need to be. And if some of you are behind for whatever reason, you missed a class or just you're struggling in that subject. So it's it's okay if you're not at the level you are, but it's not okay when you don't act, um, ask, ask for help or when you don't take advantage of the, we uh, actually benefit from the resources we have here. So once again, we have this mindset to support everybody with the help they need. Intervention and study hall. <clears throat> so uh, intervention and study hall is the structure build on the mindset we just mentioned. Uh, intervention is the time when you can actually improve your grade. You can uh, be in small group with, with your teacher. You can make up the work you missed. You can do extra practice. So for all of these things, we have time in the schedule when you, most of the time, your teachers are going to be proactive. They see you are behind. They're going to pull you for that time, and you have to join that session. If you don't join, um, that's going to be an absent. There will be consequences. So we want you to do your work on time and have your passing grades. If you're behind, your teachers will pull you for intervention, and you have to join that. We can move on. This is about our SIS, um, dear parents. Uh, it's not just students, you also have access to our system. So we want you to also uh, check the progress of your child with them. Uh, and if you don't, if you cannot log into the system, which we call SIS student information system here, please contact our IT director. His email is on the right, Oscar Yagda there at PCSS.org. He will help you join our SIS. Oh. Uh, now in the virtual life, you know, we have a lot of programs about, uh, about platforms we're using. Uh, 
and we are gonna have trainings on those. Uh, our PTO will be announcing those trainings. We strongly enc encourage you to join them. There will be trainings on our SIS, it's gonna be on Google Classroom, on Zoom. So the more you are familiar with the systems we're using, the more you can support your child. We strongly encourage you to uh, pay attention to the notifications coming from our PTO. Ms. Gavirgin is joining. Thank you for unmuting me, Mr. Koskin. So parents and, and students, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I am the director of special programs uh, and my role is to work with admins, uh, with teachers and staff to make sure that students with, with special needs and English language learners receive appropriate services and education. So students who have individualized educational programs, IEPs, will be um, uh, provided accommodations and modifications as per, the, per their IEP. And we will make sure that they have all the necessary supports to be successful uh, in their learning. However, uh, students are expected to show uh, responsibility and put in their best efforts. So just like uh, Mr. Koskin and Ms. Carter said, uh, make sure uh, you know, students need to make sure they're joining um, the classes for live instruction and completing and returning uh, assignments on time. Related services, for students who receive related services such as speech therapy, uh, occupational therapy, uh, physical therapy or counseling, uh, these services will be provided via virtual platforms uh, as well for the time, uh, we, during the time we are virtual. Uh, so service providers will be sharing Zoom links or Google links with these students. Uh, so make sure um, students, they will be sharing the links with students and parents. So uh, students need to, to make sure they're joining the therapy uh, sessions. Um, uh, these are the uh, people who you can contact for referrals for special education services or questions regarding IEPs. Uh, Ms. Amy Orgerman uh, is the uh, school psychologist and case manager for grades uh, 7 and 8. Um, for grades 9, 12, you can contact uh, Mrs. Martinelli. She is our uh, school social worker and also, again, like I said, case manager for grades 9, 12. We also have a behavior specialist who is part of our child study team, uh, Ms. Dupree. And you have her contact information here, her email. So students who are in the ESL program, um, so the English language learners, uh, will also receive accommodations and modifications based on their English language proficiency levels. Uh, again, students need to be present for classes all the time and actively participate in the virtual instruction. Um, don't hesitate to ask teachers for help when you need help. Uh, also to facilitate communication with parents of ELL students. Um, uh, school provides interpreters and translations for those parents who need translations. So never hesitate to contact, you know, the teachers when you have questions or concerns. Um, also, uh, we have an ESL teacher, you know, here for grade 7, 12. He's the contact person if you want to re refer your child for ESL services or if you have questions regarding uh, ESL accommodations and modifications. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patricia Stevenson. I'm the director of the Student Personnel Services, the guidance department. Um, I just want to give you the names of my team members, although, although they're not all in this building, um, but just for sibling preferences, um, if you need to know who's who. Um, so for the K-1 campus, we have Mr. Diggs. Um, two to six is Ms. Harden. Two to four is Ms. Harden. Five to six is Ms. Bermeo. Ms. Johnson is our seventh, and seventh through eighth grade counselor. Mr. Schuyler is ninth through 10th grade, and I'm responsible for 11th and 12th grade. Um, we also have Ms. Caroma, which you will hear from um, briefly after I speak. Um, she's our HIV slash SAC counselor. Um, so she will be talking to you a little bit about the HIV process. Okay. 
All right. So our um, counseling department, our philosophy um, is very much aligned with the school's mission. Um, our goal is to make sure that all of our students are successful. Um, in doing that, we advocate um, and monitor the student's academic career, personal, and social development. We have to adhere to the OSCA ethical standards um, in which we provide all students with the equal opportunity to counseling. We advocate for their rights. We maintain um, rights and pri um, privacy in accordance to the ethical standards, um, which is basically confidentiality. Um, what is said between us and the students, unless they are telling us that someone is hurting them um, or if they're going to perform self-harm, um, those transactions um, between the counseling department and the students are um, confidential. Um, we strive PCSST, um, we strive to promote a safe and bully-free environment for all students. And as I said before, Ms. Karoma, she will go into the process of HIV and how we deal with those situations. Um, and just for having that partnership experience where it's um, the administrators, teachers, students, and parents, we are all in this together. So we consult with all stakeholders, um, including the students, the staff members, you as a parents, the students, and the community members to make sure that our program um, and the curriculum is best suited for our students. Um, we will be continuing with our individual counseling um, during the virtual learning. So for each counselor, um, a minimum of three times we will meet with individual students um, for whatever reason, if they need one-on-one -on -one counseling, um, if it's academic support, and that will be done through um, a Zoom meeting or um, the Google Classroom, which all counselors have. Um, during the virtual learning, if there is an issue of confident of um, a unique situation where we need to notify the teachers, maybe the students need some extra support or some extra time um, to complete assignments, um, in those instances, we will notify the teachers. Um, group counseling will also take place. Um, counselors will meet with students um, based on their need, if it's academic support they need, or if we're having some social issues um, or personal issues. As long as the circumstance is based around the same um, issue, we will have um, meetings with the students, and that can last about four to six weeks. Um, again, that will be done through the Google Classroom um, or Zoom. And the information is confidential. Again, I'm going to stress confidential because that is the baseline for the counseling department unless there is an absolute need for us to divulge some information. Um, teachers can also refer students for individual and group counseling um, as they see fit. Um, our college and career readiness piece is going to be a little bit different. Normally we would invite the schools to come in and they do presentations for our students, um, but we will continue with the virtual platform. We've already started reaching out to schools um, to schedule those virtual presentations and tours. Um, the counseling department, each counseling, each counselor for the grade level will schedule um, the appropriate um, presentation and tour for that grade level. And just some of the related topics will be college and career readiness, um, academic, personal development, um, going over the FAFSA. I know um, for me, that's something that I have to work with the seniors and that's gonna be coming up soon. We will, um, for those senior parents that are on the call, we will be having our, um, our, our grade level parent meetings um, where I will give you more information regarding the college process, applications, um, filling out the FAFSA. Um, during these virtual presentations, the colleges will also talk to the students about their athletic programs and various scholarships that they can earn. Um, we will continue. I know a lot of the colleges right now are sending information. They're waiving the SAT for the students. However, I still have SAT um, fee waivers for the students that would like to participate in the SAT. Um, and then our Naviance process. We have Naviance. Um, it's our student portal where the students can do college search, career search, um, scholarship search, applying for um, applications. Um, that And that is from six through sixth through 12th grade. So all of the counselors have access and the students have access. Um, that's something that we will work with them um, in going through that college and career readiness piece. And I believe Mr. Koskin and Mr. Um, Mr. Koskin and Ms. 
Carter mentioned um, earlier about advisory. Um, our advisory is very unique to our school. And um, this is something that we put in place and we take pride in it because it helps the teachers and the students to build a relationship. We wanna make sure the students have an additional person in the building outside of the, gu the guidance counseling department um, that they can you know, reach out to if they need some more assistance. Um, so that's our advisory piece. I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna let Miss Um Karoma speak. Oh, this is oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, so continuing with our um college and career readiness, um, we do have dual enrollment. So our partnership is with um the Passaic County Community College, um, Seton Hall, Berkeley, Ramapo, and this is for students um in the eleventh and twelfth grade to take college level classes. Um it is very, um, it is a very um, great program because they're earning college credits while they're in high school and it is for half the price of what they would pay if they were actually on the college campus. Um, so we do encourage our students to participate in these programs. I know um, at Ramapo, we do have our AP Psych program and we have, um, we have AP Psych and we have African American Studies. And at Seton Hall, we have um, Spanish for a higher level Spanish for those students who are um, very fluent in Spanish. Um, our Plato system is our credit recovery. Um, if you've been with us, um, over the years, you know that at PCSSC, we do not offer summer school. Um, so we do have a, a platform for our students to earn you know, some of their credits, um, unfortunately, if they fail a class during the year, and then also for classes that we don't offer on campus. Um, so the students want to strengthen their transcripts. Um, we have, you know, we have that opportunity for them to, to earn some extra credits. Um, and just to give you a list of our AP, um, some of the AP courses that we do offer here on campus, um, we have AP World, AP US History, AP Bio, AP Chem, AP Physics, AP um, language arts and composition, lit and composition, our art program, our psychology program, as I mentioned before, we have AP Calc, um, music, um, and co our computer science and principal program. And all of these classes are eligible for 11th and 12th graders. Some, some of them are el eligible in the 10th grade, um, but this is for our higher level students. They are recommended based on their performance. Um, so we do give them an opportunity um, our AP courses, if the students um, receive between a four and a five on the AP test, when they go to college, certain classes are exempt. So it is a really um, awesome program that we offer here where they take advantage of it. And as I said, depending on the score, that's one less class that they have to pay for when they get to college. So we do encourage the students to participate. Um, now I'm going to have Ms. Karoma take over so she can explain to you um, what the HIV process is. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ms. Karoma. I'm the SAC and HIV specialist here at uh, PCSST. Um, I just wanted to uh, briefly talk about um, harassment, intimidation, or bullying. Um, during these times where we are going to be remote and virtual, we are still implementing um, HIV for students. So just a brief overview, um, harassment, intimidation, or bullying means any gesture, any written, verbal, or physical act, or any electronic communication, whether it be a single incident or a series of incidents that is reasonably perceived as being motivated either by any actual or perceived characteristics such as race, color, religion, ancestry, national origin, um, uh, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, or mental, physical, and sensory disability, or by any other distinguishing characteristics. And this can take place either on school property, um, at any school-sponsored function, or on a school bus, or even off school grounds, um, depending on the situation. Um, and it's, this has to substantially disrupt or interfere with the orderly operation of the school or the rights of other students um, this can be done with, with a person that is reasonable, reasonable meaning somebody that knows what they're doing and um, they're capable of understanding that they are actually intimidating or harassing someone. Um, they also um, are in insulting or demeaning a student or a group of students <clears throat> for those particular reasons that we stated above, for those characteristics. 
Um, they're creating a hostile and educational environment for the student or causing physical and emotional harm um, and also interfering with a student's education. Um, so you can go to the next slide. Can I? Okay, thank you. So um, we wanna reiterate that um, PCSST is a bully-free school zone and we have no tolerance for any HIV um, incidents. Um, sorry, this is cut off here. I have a copy over here, but um, HIV can happen through electronic communication such as uh, social media and texting. Um, so students, even though you're not on school grounds right now, um, it's, it can still be reported. Things online are still, um, always going to be there, whether you delete it or not. Um, just keep in mind that uh, when you say certain things online, that they can be uh, considered an HIV incident. Um, students can report an incident of HIV to myself, Ms. Karoma, or um, on the be and they can do it on behalf of themselves or a peer. Um, if necessary, an HIV incident can also be reported to another educator at the school. Um, uh, there will be a thorough investigation at any time that there is an alleged HIV incident. Whether it did happen or not, we do have to follow uh, state guidelines and laws, and we do have to investigate every incident as if um, it, has, um, it has actually happened until we can prove that it did not or it did. Um, and this investigation will also include bystanders. So anyone that may have witnessed the incident, if you have been named or if you, you were seen nearby or may have heard of anything, you will also be a part of an investigation. Parents will always be notified um, once their child is involved in any HIV investigation, whether they're the perpetrator, victim, or a bystander. Um, and um, although some cases may not fall on the HIV, which includes such as um, things like occasional arguments where two people are exchanging back and forth, um, or a fight where two people have um, exchanged things back and forth, it's, 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 it's a difference because um, usually bull HIVs are one-sided. Um, other conflict situations are have more than one side to the situation. So, um, and there will still be consequences, even if this does not come out as an alleged HIV, you can still face consequences for violating the student's code of conduct. Um, so just remember to report anything you see, stand up to bullying, um, and we encourage you to help make your school a safe place for everybody. Thank you. Okay, you can come back. Okay. Uh, so discipline during virtual instruction. Um, we're kind of limited. Um, however, there can be disciplinary actions taken for misuse of technology. So you were given a technology, it is issued by the school, therefore it is owned in possession of the school. So therefore there are certain um, standards and expectations that we have. Um, so any type of misuse of technology the parents will be contacted. Um, the second offense, then we will contact IT, our IT department who will add more restrictions to your device. And then the third offense will be discipline points. So we will come back to school eventually. And those discipline points will add up. And depending on the amount of points that you have, then you will receive your consequence. So please, um, be mindful that even though you are at home, um, please be a professional student, because if not, there will still be consequences. If there is misconduct during live instruction, it may not deal with technology. First offense, there will be parent contact. The teacher will contact the parent, whether um, if the parent or teacher wants a virtual meeting, that can happen too, that can, they can discuss the infraction. Um, the second offense will then be a meeting with myself. And if it continues, then the third offense will be the discipline points. And like I said, when we return to the building, um, then the discipline points will add up and you will have to receive the consequence. Okay. Hi, my name is Ms. Rivera. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the Registrar, the Truancy Officer, Activities Coordinator, and Transportation Coordinator. Um, at this time, I want to discuss daily attendance. Attendance will be taken each 
period. Keep in mind that even though you are remotely learning, you are still following a school schedule. So you must follow the schedule that Mr. Koskin and Ms. Carter spoke about and be present to class the entire period. Just because you show up for five minutes doesn't mean we're gonna mark you present. You have to stay the whole period. Attendance will impact your academic grade. 18 days absent from any class you will have to repeat the class, the course, all over again. 18 days absent from online learning, so you didn't log in, 18 days, unexcused, you will lose credit for the entire school year. It is important that you track your own attendance on, I, on SIS. If you have, if you see or you see any errors from the teacher, they marked you absent when you were really there, it's important that you speak to the teacher, you email the teacher and talk about it or email me and I'll follow up with that teacher or another administrator. Next slide, please. Tardiness. If you're 15 minutes um, late into your class, your Zoom class, you will be marked tardy. You are to follow your daily schedule and it's expected that you arrive on time to your class. Tardiness will impact your academic grade. So you wanna make sure that you're on time. Thank you. One more time. Good morning, everybody. Sorry about that. I'm Gina Mentalori, Athletics Director. Um, there have been some changes according to COVID standards. Um, so if you look on the screen here, instead of having our fall, winter, and spring seasons, they've added a fourth season. Um, so we will have boys and girls soccer and boys and girls cross country beginning on September 14th. Um, basketball will begin um, in December. So everything's moved back a month and they're shorter. Um, periods because they did not want indoor athletics for girls volleyball in the fall. They moved it to season three, which is starting in February, and then baseball, softball, and boys volleyball in April. I will let you know that our athletic programs have been practicing all summer. Um, they've been following all the COVID protocols. Um, there have been no positive cases. They are following protocols. We're very proud of our coaches and our student athletes for doing such a great job this summer. Um, so we're looking forward to moving forward to the fall. As far as player eligibility, um, there is an athletic packet that's available on our website. Um, you can also email me and I will get you a copy. Um, we also have copies in the front office. For grades um, 10 through 12, you only have to do a, uh, a modified packet and we'll talk about that in the next slide. But the students um, will be um, held to the same standard of the 2.0 GPA um, and only one F. So please make sure you are um, attending your classes, keeping your grades up. It's very, very important that you do that. Okay, so um, schedules are not uploaded yet. They should be coming out next week. So the schedules that you see when you go online now, those are the schedules that are old. Um, we will be deleting those schedules as soon as the new schedules come in. It should be Monday or Tuesday next week, we're hoping. Um, and, and it's really important parents that you are um, understanding that we really are counting on you getting your son or daughter to their games uh, since you won't be at school during the day to get on the bus. Um, so it's really important. We still will have busing for away games. Um, home games will be, um, you can take your son or daughter directly to the field, which will be Peddington Park for soccer um, and cross country. Um, they will be either Garrett Mountain or Darlington, uh, but we will always have buses. So uh, please make sure you um, are communicating with your coaches and making sure that that's, uh, that's something you're, you're doing. Um, as far as attendance policy, um, in order for your child to be able to compete in athletics, they have to be present in school that day. And so as far as um, virtual um, uh, academics is concerned, your, your son or daughter needs to be present in their classrooms and considered present uh, during the day to be able to compete in the afternoon. So it's very important that 
our, our student athletes are logging onto their classes and attending their classes every period. Um, they're also, again, we've talked about transportation. It's, it's very important that they're getting to the school to get on the bus or communicating to the coach that they'll be brought directly to the field of play. Um, as far as um, being athletically eligible, as far as your physical packets, physical uh, um, uh, doctor's um, visit, anybody who competed in athletics last year, your, um, your packet is still eligible. You only have to get in the health history update, the COVID history update, and the COVID questionnaire, and your COVID participation uh, permission slip. Those are all on the website. You can also call me if you're having trouble downloading it. I will get it to you. I can email it to you. Incoming freshmen, you have to get an entire full packet, which means you need to make an appointment with a doctor. And as I stated before, the summer athletes went through all this process without any problems. It was very uh, smooth. So we're looking forward to it continuing that way. Um, and we're excited to participate. So please, any questions, please email me. Thank you. Good morning, this is Oscar, uh, IT coordinator uh, for the district. And I like to give you information about the technology, what we are doing. And we have been doing the same process the last five, six years. That's why it would be the same procedure. But for the new students and new parents, uh, what we have is in our high school, we have iPads for the school students, ninth grade through 12th grade, or they all get iPad. If they have any Chromebook eighth grade, they will be returning that and getting an iPad for the high school. For the middle school, seven and eight in our campus using Chromebooks. And we are collecting right now the last year's eight great Chromebooks because we want to get them ready for the new year. That's what we are doing. Now, what we have is we have contracts to sign. The contracts has information on it, which I'm going to explain in the next slides. There is going to be a contract that we are uh, making sure the kids are aware and the parents are aware. And there is an insurance, which is going to be slides. I'm going to explain that too. Next slide, please. Um, we are using Google in our school and we have been using and you are using the last so many years. We are okay with that. Therefore, I don't have to go through this slide. We are going to use everything technology. Now, Chromebooks and iPads for seven and eight grade as uh, uh, all the students. What it is, is the students are responsible for their devices. I know in the school, we usually mention you don't give to it somebody, the same thing at home. If they have a four year uh, sibling, don't give it to your sibling. Just be responsible, keep it clean, keep it using. Don't want, you don't want little brother or sister to step on it. Just be sure that you are responsible, keep it in good shape. Uh, if there's any issue with the device, email us. You have our email. And there's an email at the end of this slide I'm going to give you, IT help at PCSSD. You can send that and that would go to multiple people and we'll get back to you. Um, every student gets a device, and yes, we are going to give all the students one device. Right now, we are collecting, like I said, last year's A grade, but everybody gets it, and we are going to inspect them and then give it, and they are school property. They should be used in the sessions. Uh, using your personal, we are not encouraging to use your personal. We are suggesting to use our school, but if you use personal, we don't control that. Uh, next slide. Uh, one other thing from the previous one is the parents are responsible, meaning like this is your home, you make your own rule. If the kid is trying to use their Chromebook one o'clock in the morning, it's your call to say, no, you are not using, it is your home. And the next slide, please. Uh, this is another thing. All these devices, GPS and all kinds of trackings and everything, we are not tracking anything on these devices, meaning like we are not looking if the kid took the Chromebook to New Jersey, out of state or grandmothers or grandfather, we don't do that. That's what we just need to say this thing as a, a school, it is, we are required to say, it. please make sure we are not doing it, but the kids has to be careful what they share online. Because these devices, if they share something on the website, their personal information, phone, social security, anything is dangerous. They should not use, share anything uh, personal online. Um, the contracts, uh, I'll put on the website too, and I'll sh uh, send email to all the parents. We have a hard copy in the school and we give it to parents, but I'll put online, I'll uh, email everybody. 
please sign the contracts. Like I said, the contracts <clears throat> explain what we have here. And these are the policies uh, from our school. What they are saying is, these are school property. You have to use the guidance with the school, meaning like you have to obey the rules of the school, whatever Ms. Carter or other guidance everybody says, they are all applied. Um, here's a good thing, uh, which uh, I have kids too. I, I, I don't like to pay it, but what happened is we have all these devices we want to buy an insurance. We, right now the insurance and the cases are $53. I know it's a little bit high, but what happened is this is going to cover entire year. If they break it three times, five times, it would cover it. But if you don't have the insurance, even you take it one time, it would cost at least $100. That's why the insurance is covering. Now, the only thing it doesn't cover is the charge and adapter, it doesn't cover. We usually replace that if it is a regular uh, malfunction, but we are not replacing a charger which is eaten by dog. That's why just be careful and we are encouraging you to get the insurance. Now, the other thing is the cases. If you are a high school kid and you have a case already on the iPad, you don't have to buy the case. You can buy only the insurance. The same thing for the uh, Chromebooks. You can go to Chromebooks, the same thing too. Uh, if you have a Chromebook and you have a case from last year, you are moving to eighth grade, you don't have to buy the case. You just buy the insurance. Like I said, the insurance is to protect you for the entire year when it is broken or anything. Uh, it doesn't cover lost all those, but it is it is it's a good insurance. And if you buy it uh, individually, it costs more. That's why we are giving this service. We are not making anything. Um, the insurance, we are, like I said, it's not mandatory. We cannot make it mandatory, but we are encouraging everybody to get it because we don't want you to pay 200, 300 bucks in the long run. Just 35 bucks one time, entire year. Um, the other thing is, if you need help, you can send to this IT help at pcssd.org. Uh, this is a group email. All the IT people can see it. Therefore, if you send it from K12, uh, all the five IT people here, they have access, they'll get back to you. Uh, if you put there the issue, your phone number, your email, that way we can call you back or email you back, no problem. Um, I hope this answers it. I guess we are running out of time. That's why I'm rushing through it. Uh, but if you have any question, uh, we can take the questions, but I don't know how much time we have. I know I've seen some people raise their hands. It might not be related to IT, but I'm going to enable them to talk. Mr. Reza. Yeah, I just open. Uh, this is the end of our presentation. Uh, are there any questions you would like to address if you didn't already? Okay. So the recording will be available on our database. The link will be available on the database. So when you log into the student database, first you the thing you see is the announcements. So in the announcement section, we will make these recordings available. They can drop off the devices any day between nine o'clock to three o'clock, Monday through Friday. We started this thing last week. If you have a device to drop off, that's what it is. And the other thing is if it is broken or any malfunction, just please bring them between nine to three. And now we are doing this thing, but when the school starts, Please try to make an appointment because if you don't make an appointment, it might be like so many reasons. We might be busy or that. But please, if you want to come to school, not this week, maybe not next week, but after that, you need to make an appointment. That includes, that includes incoming freshmen? Yes, it includes all the students, uh, 7 through 12, uh, even the, uh, other, other, this, other buildings we have. Nine to three, the IT people will be in the school to help parents. If we to pick up the iPads or pick up the Chromebooks from uh, uh, the building, we will send an email saying that it is ready to pick up. But right now, if you have the old one to return it, if there is something malfunctioning returning or bringing us to update them, please bring them nine to three. But when it is ready, we will uh, email everybody saying that you can come and pick it up. That would be probably next week. So I just would like to uh, make a comment about the hybrid education. So as I stated in our uh, in the, in my 
uh, letter and also it is available on our website and the database. So we are starting all virtual. This doesn't mean that we're gonna go all virtual entire year. So our initial date is October 2nd as we are going to come back to the building. So those parents who already notified us telling that they wanna do all virtual entire year, we have their names and details. We will reach out to them before we go, go back to uh, in-person instruction. We will confirm if they are still on the same page, then we will program their classes, their schedules accordingly. So we will be reaching out to all parents or all students about the updates. So we are just short of certain PPEs and also we are just trying to get our air quality improved. Once they are done, there shouldn't be any reason for us to remain all virtual unless there is a mandate from the state. But we will keep you posted on that. Okay. Okay, I am unmuting the first person. There are four people ha raised their hand, which is called iPhone. I don't know the name, it doesn't show the name. Uh, you are on uh, Please. Please take your question. Okay, they are muted again. Go to next person, please. Okay, the person is Karen. Okay, the, the, she yes, will... no, I'm here, but you answered the question. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Except for I, I wasn't clear on did they have, to, do you have a specific uniform or like how they had to be dressed, but I, I heard clearly that they should not be in the bed and in pajamas, but I didn't hear anything else. So I was just asking. We, we, we have the tech day uh, protocol, so they, they can dress like a tag day. Same okay. rule you apply. Great idea. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, uh, Lorley Rodriguez. So there's a question. Do you have to be on camera? Yes, students need to be on camera unless their parents tells us that they don't want their kids on the camera then we will turn that camera off. But they still need to be live. They still need to interact in the classroom so that student's microphone will be on and they should be able to communicate. But cameras, if parents don't want their kids to have camera on, they need to notify us, we will take care of that. And we have an, our teachers will show students how to put a virtual background. For example, right now I have real background, so I can change this to a virtual one. So this is my virtual background. So we will provide vir virtual background options for students. If they don't wanna show their room or background, they will be able to use the virtual background that will make it simple for everyone else and you don't need to feel uncomfortable. Okay, I have Nefertiti. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I just had a few quick questions, so but I think it's been answered. I can come any day nine to three for laptops, be, um, right? I mean, Chromebooks. Yes, any day nine to three 
to your campus. If your kid is on the whichever the campus, you can go there and nine to three, there will be an IT person who will help you. Okay, and who do I speak to about, um, I mean, who's the seventh grade uh, guidance counselor? Because I think that's who I would need to speak to about this next John question. Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. Okay, um, may I have her email or is she also in this chat? I can speak with her after. We can type her uh, email on the chat. You can copy from there. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Um, I think that covers um, everything. And as far as schedules, you said they're not even up right now. Because when I went on SIS, um, we are fine tuning the schedules. We are fine nothing. The schedules. It's going to be available before the third. Okay. So you, you keep checking. Uh, September 1st, it should be up and running, but just in case some adjustments needs to be done, but for the third, it will be all up and running. Okay. Um, so I just need that uh, email and I, that's it? It's already in the chat. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining. This is Shuanda. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I posted the question, but I'm not sure if I did it correctly, anyone's seen it, but um, in the event that my child's iPad is being repaired or not um, back yet um, um, by next week, are we able to use that laptop that we had at home, which has Zoom and Google Chrome? Yes, you can use them. Okay. You can use your device, there's nothing limiting you from not using it, but we encourage our schools because some applications may not work because of the Google's restrictions, but it should be okay. Okay, the other question that I, I posted was, um, my child lost his charger. So um, do I just email the IT email to get a new one or or what? We, we don't replace the lost or uh, eaten by dog, like something not regular, but if it is like, good shape but it is not working then we replace those but lost ones or the other ones we don't charge we don't replace them and you can buy them from amazon or the best buy or micro centers they're like 15 bucks but like i said uh, we, we don't replace the lost or out of shape ch chargers right i'm fine with with um buying it i just need to know what kind to get um, I'll uh, in the I'll email every parent if you're a parent uh, the the model. I'll email to entire parents again. Uh, what are the models of charges we have for devices? Okay, I'll do that because definitely like mid year his his iPad it won't charge. So we've been using the laptop at home. So when I dropped off the iPad yesterday, I did um, make mention that it won't charge. So. Okay. If it is an iPad, here's the thing. It, it should work regular uh, cable, but the only thing is the charger has to be big block because it has to push through more juices, more energy versus the uh, the small iPhone ones. IPhones, iPhone chargers doesn't work with iPads because it doesn't produce the same power. That's the okay. uh, But the other thing is if you return it and you say it is not charging, we can check it here. Yeah. yeah. That or the iPad. If it's an iPad issue, we'll replace the iPad. Okay. Okay, good. So I'll just wait for you to send out the what type of charger so that I can go purchase. Thank okay. you. Uh -huh. Thank you. No eraser. Elena Gomez. And this is the last one. You should be here. You should be talking. Uh, you know when we're going to be picking up the Chromebooks for the seventh grade? Uh, we will send an email to pick up probably next week or the latest the week after that. But we'll send an email and text message to pick it up. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Wh which grade is the students? I missed that, I guess. Seventh, I heard seventh. Okay. 
Uh, seventh grade, yeah. Yes, we will send an email, yes, thank you. Okay. And there's one more person, Karen Martinez. Ms. Martinez, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, hi, how are you doing today? Thank you, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Thank you. My question is, uh, what kind of uh, supplies does the seventh and eighth grader will need? So for each subject, the subject teachers will provide the list. So they need to wait from email from their, uh, their subject teachers. It is not on the website? No, no. 712 campus, we do differently than 2-6. So each teacher will tell students what is required for their classes. So we don't have a package as we do in our elementary campus. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, there's nobody else has questions. What, what do I need if to you know? If you still have questions, please don't hesitate to send us. We will collect all those questions and we are preparing a FAQ that will be available on the website for everyone to see. So don't hesitate to send your uh, questions to us, email to any of the admin. We will uh, happy to answer them. And I would like to thank you for joining us for this presentation. Okay, uh, those who arrived late to the presentation, this recording will be available on our database announcement section. The link will be available on the database announcement section. When you log in, that's the first thing you will see on the database. Thank you very much. Uh, the presentation is, would be available too, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you everyone, have a great day and